Hello everyone and this is Sugul Puroit and you're watching my YouTube channel. In this particular session, I'm going to explain you about an uh, experiment which is based on quantitative estimation of magnesium ions. Alright, now you understand the word quantitative very well. Quantitative is a process by which we are going to estimate the amount of the ion present. So here I have already disclosed the quantitative estimation is going to be of magnesium ion. Alright, so how to proceed for this is, first of all is I'll explain you the theory behind this particular experiment and then I'll explain you the procedure of that. So the theory what it says of magnesium is, the method which is going to be used for the quantitative estimation of magnesium is by means of complexometric titration. We are going to use complexometric titration. Now when I use the word complexometric titration, the very first thing which comes into your mind is, yes, it is related to complex. When you know about a complex compound, it essentially requires two species. One is a metal ion and the other one is a ligand. You already know my difference, who is a metal ion? And yes, it's going to be what? Magnesium. Now the ligand is, that we are going to consider is, the metal as I said is going to be magnesium ions, the ligand is going to be EDTA, ethylene, diamine, tetraacetic acid. But now, my dear friends, because I'm using this word titration, so I also require a third species. And yes, the one which is going to indicate the completion of the reaction. You got the hint, yes? What am I talking about? Yes, it's indicator, all right? So we require a third species also, and that is indicator. When you talk about complex formation, we require a metal and we require a ligand and there is going to be a bonding between the two. So as a result of which, the metal ion solution will be in a conical flask. The ligand is going to be filled up in the burette. Mm -hmm. So I'll just make this very clear to all of you, conical flask. This is going to be in the burette. And now when you talk about an indicator, what is exactly an indicator is? Indicator, my dear friends, they are dyes. Okay, that means they are organic compounds and which are going to be colored. Okay, and hence at a particular completion of the reaction, it is going to show a change in color and this is going to be a visible change. And as a result of which, we are in a position to estimate, yes, this is the end of the reaction. All right, so it is going to be belonging to dyes and that's going to be what? Colored. Now, at some point of time, my dear friends, you must have already performed the titration. So when you perform a titration, as I said, we require a conical flask, we require a burette. Conical flask, we take some solution through a pipette, and then the indicator, where it has to be added. Yes, you know it very well. The indicator has to be added into the conical flask. Now here in this case, the conical flask is made up of all metal ion. So when I'm going to mix these two solutions, Okay, so it results in the formation of a complex. It results what? In a formation of a complex. And that is going to be a metal indicator complex. Now what I'm going to do is, slowly and steadily, I'm going to open the nozzle of the burette and drop by drop, the burette solution goes into the conical flask. In this particular experiment, the, the burette solution is EDTA. So EDTA is going to be added into the metal indicator complex. Now EDTA is a strong ligand. All right, and therefore it has a greater affinity towards the metal. And because of that greater affinity, it is having the suitable power to break the bond between the metal and the indicator. All right, and as a result of which, EDTA will form a bond with itself. And as a result of which I get a metal EDTA complex and the indicator is set free. Okay, indicator is what? Set free. Now, as I said, indicator belongs to what? Dyes and they're going to be colored. So here this indicator has to have a color. But then the very same indicator when it forms a complex with a metal, all right, so then it shows some different color. 
it's very obvious, even human beings, you know very well, that they show a different character when they are in a combined state, that means when they are interacting with other people. Okay, and it all depends upon with whom they are interacting and accordingly their behavior is going to change. Their behavior is not going to be the same with when they are interacting with their mom, with their dad, with their friends, with their teachers. Every way is going to be different. The same thing is over here. The indicator is the same, but then it all depends upon with whom it is going to interact. So here when an indicator is interacting with a metal, so it is going to show some different color. Now, let me be very specific with respect to the example now. I have specified which is a vertical flask solution. I have also specified which is a burette solution. Then I need to specify which indicator also am I going to add. And yes, that indicator is aerochrome black tea, which is being written in a very short form as EBT, aerochrome black tea. Now this aerochrome black tea, when it is going to combine with a magnesium, it results in a wine red color. Okay, it is what? Wine red. But if you are going to see just aerochrome black tea as it is, without being combining with any other species, then it is blue in color. And this is what I am getting over here. At the end of the reaction, the indicator is set free. And therefore, the original color of the indicator is restored. And this is blue. So I hope you understood the color change also. And that is going to be from wine red to blue. Alright? Now, next thing is, the most important factor which is going to decide about the stability of this entire process because that's very important because in a titration we require to get a constant burial pudding which we call it as CBR and that is possible only when the resulting products are going to be stable so that means metal EDTA complex is going to be stable all right and that is the most important factor is pH so pH is a very important factor which needs to be controlled I need to make sure that two things have to be made sure and that is first is to create a pH which is requisite to a medium which is conducive enough to bring about a color change from wine red to blue and once I create that pH I need to make sure for the entire experiment that pH value should remain constant it should not change because that is going to affect the stability of this metal EDTA complex so first thing is now, this color change is going to be quite abrupt, okay, it's going to be quite visible, okay, only when it is going to be carried out in a alkaline medium with a value of 10. So, I need to use a buffer solution for that. I need to use what? A buffer solution. Because buffer solution is a solution which has a particular pH. Here, the pH value I need to have for this particular experiment is what? 10. And not only it is going to create this uh, environment of pH 10, but also it is going to make sure that the pH value remains constant throughout the entire experiment. Okay, and that is, I'll just give you a very simple word about how it is going to be prepared is, I take 7 grams of ammonium chloride, I mix it with say 56.8 cm cube of liquid ammonia, the specific gravity is going to be around 0 0.88 to 0 0.9 and I dissolve it in 100 cm cube of distilled water. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, this is the method of preparation of what? Buffer solution, 7 grams of ammonium chloride, 56.8 cm cube of liquor ammonia and then I need to dissolve it and I need to bring it to the level of 100 cm cube by making use of a standard measuring flask. So this is going to be your 100 ml of uh, buffer solution corresponding to a pH 10, okay, which we are going to add into the course of this reaction so that the stability is maintained. So my dear friends, this is all about the theory behind the complexometric estimation of magnesium and I am sure you have understood this very well. Alright my dear friends, now if you have understood the theory behind this experiment, now I will explain you the procedure. The procedure is very simple my dear friends. What we need to do is, step number one is, we are going to take a mixture, say around, weighing has to be done, by using an accurate balance, whatever is the exact one that you are going to note, but here you are going to take around say 0.5 grams of the magnesium salt, Mg2 plus salt. Now, we are going to transfer that into a beaker 
In your beaker, we are going to add around say 2 to 3 cm cube of concentrated sulfuric acid and around say 25 to 30 cm cube of distilled water. Now here, let me be very clear. This is a magnesium salt. It's having a charge of 2 plus. So that means it is associated with a negative ion. So depending upon the negative ion, the addition of the acid is being taking place. So that means if I'm going to take magnesium sulfate, I'm going to add sulfuric acid. If I'm going to take magnesium chloride, then I'm going to add concentrated hydrochloric acid. If I'm going to take magnesium nitrate, then I'm going to add concentrated nitric acid. All right, it's common ion effect which helps in the solubility of the salt. Okay, so two to three cm cube of concentrated sulfuric acid and 25 to 30 cm cube of distilled water. Now what next is to be done is, you treat it, it gets dissolved in this, and then transfer it into a 100 cm cube of standard measuring flask. Okay, 100 cm cube of what? standard measuring flask. And then of course, uh, there will be some washings also has to be given to the beaker. So you need to add into it, into the same standard measuring flask, the washings, uh, around say two to three washings has to be given obviously with distilled water to whom it has to be given yes the beaker in which we have dissolved the magnesium salt and that also will go into the salt measuring flask and finally you need to do the dilution up to 100 ml final dilution is up to what 100 cm cube okay the mark will be already there on the standard measuring flask once again I repeat what you do is first of all you take a watch glass, uh, take around say 0.5 grams of the magnesium salt, transfer it into a beaker, add into it 2 or 3 cm cube of concentrated sulfuric acid and then around 25 to 30 cm cube of distilled water, stir it to dissolve and transfer it into a 100 cm cube of standard measuring flask. Also give some washings to this beaker, say around 2 or 3 washings with distilled water and that also has to be transferred into the same standard measuring flask. Now, the standard measuring flask, the total content, the total volume is 100 cm cube. So, this is not going to make 100 because this is around say 25 to 30 cm cube. This is around a couple of cm cube. And with the washing also, you're not going to fill the entire beaker with water and then you're going to add that. No, the washings has to be only is in small amount. More number of washings with a small amount of the solution every time during washing. Please keep this in mind. Okay, so the amount of water that I'm using per washing has to be less. So I'll be carrying it around say two or three times. So this will be around say approximately 50 to 60 cm cube. So final dilution has to be done up to 100 cm cube and that also the dilution has to be always with what? Distilled water. So this becomes your solution. Okay, which solution is? Yes, it's the magnesium ion solution. Mg2 plus solution is prepared. I hope you have understood up to this very well. All right. Now what we do is we fill the burette. Next step is filling up of the burette with standardized EDDA. What is the meaning of standardized EDDA? That means I already know the concentration of EDDA before I actually carry out the titration. Okay, this is called as a standard solution. So I am already standardizing EDTA by making use of a zinc sulfate previously only and then that standardized EDTA I am using over here. So I am going to fill the buret. First of all, I rinse the buret with that and then I will fill it up to the zero mark with standard EDTA. Next thing is, I am going to take 10 cm cube through a pipette magnesium ion solution Next is, I'm going to add around say one test tube of water so that the color change becomes apparent and of course you know that it has to be what? Distilled. Okay, the color change has to be what? Apparent. And then I'm going to add around three to four drops or I say pinch of aerochrome black tea depending upon whether it is in a solution form or whether it is in a solid form and yes. The most important criteria is the pH. So see around one fourth the test tube of buffer solution. 
And you know the pH of that buffer solution is 10. And now you titrate the titration through EDTA from the puree, drop by drop, and the end point is going to be wine red to blue. Okay, upon addition of all these solutions, that is the magnesium solution, the water, the pinch of it, iridium black tea, and you know, buffer solution, the color is going to be what? Wine red. Now, when I'm going to add EDTA, it has to become what? Blue. Okay, so the color change is going to be wine red to blue. You have to ca carry out this reading at least for three times, and two of which has to come as constant. Don't bring the readings. Okay, you need to get the readings. I hope you understand this very well. You are very smart enough. All right, so please try to get the readings, at least two of which is constant, and report those two constant readings as CBR. That is constant bure reading. All right, so this is my dear friends, the entire procedure of how to execute the quantitative estimation of magnesium complexometrically. I'll just go through it very quickly. And that is, first thing is approximately 0.5 grams, but then of course, whatever the weight that you get it from the accurate balance, you have to record it because you need to go for its further calculations. So you should be taking it in a range of around 0.5 of the magnesium salt in a watch glass, transfer it into a beaker, add around say two or three CMP of concentrated acid, as I already mentioned, which type of an acid has to be taken, that depends upon the salt of magnesium which you are using, and then around 25 to 30 cm cube of distilled water, stir it well, transfer it into a standard measuring flask, give some couple of washings to the beaker, that also transfer to the same standard measuring flask, and then dilute it up to the mark of 100 ml. This becomes your 100 ml of a solution of magnesium ions. Next thing is, you already have a EDTA solution, which is standardized. That means you already know the concentration of EDTA before you actually start with the titration. So that will go into the buret after rinsing the buret. And then you take a conical flask, okay? And then 10 cm cube through a pipette, okay? I'll just make a note over here, conical flask, so that you understand very well. Of course, it is well understood, but it's still, I want to make it absolutely clear, no room of any doubt, CF. In conical flask, I'm going to take 10 cm cube through the pipette, the magnesium ion solution which I've prepared over here. To it, I'm going to add around say one test tube of distilled water so that the color change becomes apparent. And then three or four drops or a pinch of heliochrome black tea, okay, if, depending upon its solution or a solid. And I'm going to add into it one fourth the test tube of the buffer solution pH is going to be around 10 and then the color change as you know is going to be white red to blue and you're going to carry out readings three times and at least two of which you need to get the readings constant and that reading will be called as CDR. All right. So I think this part is very clear to all of you all. So thank you so very much for being with me. If you have understood this then please please press the like button and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you so much.